Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a reel. It's a Danco reel. I'm wondering if that Danco is the distributor down in Florida. There's a, uh, a distributor down in that uh, Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton area named Danco. And uh, this one's got that name on it. And I have a reel here that initially I thought was an Ocean City reel because, well, it looks like the Ocean City 900 series. But underneath it says made in Japan. <clears throat> well, not quite sure uh, if it's a knockoff of it or if it's a completely different reel, but it certainly looks the, the way. And this one was sent in by Kevin. It's working, so we're going to take it apart. We're going to service it and get it back to him to go fishing again. Now I started by removing that uh, set screw that holds the handle screw on. And that handle screw is, you know, if you have a pen wrench, you can take that handle screw off. And uh, we're going to have a mystery to solve here. So the handle comes next. And I take all the pieces and parts that I remove from the reel and I put them into a parts tray. I use a fast food container for that. And uh, I also take pictures because, well, I'm going to be stumped as, as well as many folks are going to be stumped by just what exactly is this reel? Well, one of the things I can tell you about this reel right away, it looks pretty darn new. That that brass is all shiny in there. There's obviously evidence of wear on the spool and all, but it looks like whatever the materials were that they were using, that they were quality materials. Take pictures along the way. Here we have the star adjuster. We have a shim washer. We have a gear sleeve. So you want to get your camera out and take notes before you go much further so that you know the order that they are in when they go back on. I'm not sure if I need to remove this uh, line assembly. We'll leave it there, but we may need to remove that screw for the line guide assembly when we go to reinstall. One, two, three, four exterior screws that I'm aware of. And I say that because sometimes they hide one on the inside. And uh, that's a note of caution there. If you are going to uh, remove the four screws and find out that they don't, uh, that that side plate is not releasing, you need to look a little bit further. Well, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please hit that notification button so that you can see when I post the new videos. I post videos frequently. They're almost all on fishing reels or the fishing industry or fishing topics of the day. And uh, if you don't want to miss any, the notification is the best way to do that. Well, and then you can figure out which ones you want to see based on the ones that are being posted. Because I work on freshwater, saltwater, and everything in between, and uh, large and small scale reels. And I know that doesn't appeal to the entire audience, so just uh, use that notification button to figure which ones you want to view. Notice that the three screws, and there's four, I put one in the tray, are different. The shorter screws belong in the reel seat, the two longer screws go into the cross post. Well, this is releasing fine, so uh, you don't have to worry too much about the other side. This is, uh, my guess would be, this is an Olympic reel based on the design that almost looks like a pen reel uh, interior, even though the exterior looked very much like an Ocean City reel. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to take this spool out because I want to clean this spool. It's got a lot of surface um, corrosion on it, and I want to grab a piece of steel wall and some metal polish in order to do the cleaning. So this is 4-0 steel wool. That's, this is the, the safest or the least abrasive of all of them. I'm going to put some metal polish on. We're going to see if we can't knock those little uh, freckles, if you will, off the spool. Going to make it nice for Kevin, but also keep it from abrading line. If you uh, leave those things on there, what's going to happen is when you go to cast or drop your line out, the line will rub on the side of the spool on each revolution, and those little burrs, well, they act as a uh, uh, sandpaper. They're going to abrade the line over time, and you will get lines to snap off. All right, uh, we've just done that. It doesn't take much. And I'm feeling and 
for the most part those those little burrs are gone. Now there's not much you can do with the loss of chrome. That's what's happened here is that the items have uh, corroded. The metal has kind of popped up. I call it freckling. And uh, that uh, causes the issues with their metal loss when you go to remove them. There's an idler gear. I'm just checking all the teeth. There's a drive gear for the Level wind assembly. I like to oil those. I don't uh, put much credence in terms of putting grease on them because grease can trap particulate and the grease will uh, eventually erode the teeth if, uh, if you're not careful with it. I do put a little bit of grease onto the spool side and the spool gear that's going to drive that idler gear. And I'm going to reinstall that assembly. I'm going to use that steel wool. There's a little bit I can buff off here for the cosmetics. All right. We'll get back to that line gear when we reassemble the case. I've noticed on this one, at least, that we don't have the totally annoying um, piece here with the uh, set spring for the anti-reverse. Some of these uh, reels are... Uh, have a little spring that kind of wraps around that anti-reverse dog and it's just maddening. In this case it looks like we're okay. Also notice that a little spring has jumped out of here. This is where the pictures would have taken you well, but it goes on that little post there which is the adjuster for that free spool. So I'm just going to put that in my parts tray so it doesn't roll around as I work on the rest of the reel. As I mentioned, this very much looks like a piece of pen uh, side plates. Let's see if I can grab one real quick here to show you. So this is on a larger scale, but this is a pen reels made in the USA side plate. And boy, if it doesn't somewhat look the same, right? The, the bridge assembly, the jack assembly, the eccentric, and even the gears down below kind of look the same. So it's not a pen reel, but it looks like one. All right. Four bridge screws are holding this in. When we go to service that, we want to remove those. Let's take the picture on this side before you go. Note the marking on where that uh, anti-reverse spring is, for example. I like to cut my hand when I do these because I'm not sure when we remove this bridge what's going to happen with that anti-reverse stock. And if you're not sure, you'd rather catch it in your hand than have it spring out. It is attached to a spring there. And I hazard a guess that says that if that thing gets lost, it's uh, irreplaceable. My guess on this reel is 1970s. Not quite sure. Probably have to do a little bit more work to find that out. That's two down. Those are the same. Looks like all four of these screws are the same. We should be able to push the bridge out now. And again, I've cut my hand because I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with that anti-reverse. All right. The bridge comes out. Here's your anti-reverse dog. So I, I'm comfortable that I'm going to be able to reinstall that. I'm going to push that through and just drop this off to the side. I don't need to put that into a parts tray. Next, we're going to remove we'll, we'll move the jack up. And then we should be able to remove that. I use a little... Uh, pair of pliers to help me get the leverage to take that out. Here's our set there. And we have the drag assembly and we have the drag washers. And one of those springs just went to the right. So I pause the camera and go get that spring before it's too late. Well, I was fortunate. The uh, spring didn't go far, so that's the second spring, and that goes into my porch tray. I felt something there. I wasn't quite sure what it was. All right, I'm going to use a penetrating oil as a degreaser. I'll go ahead and clean this. Well, again, the reels at Kevin Center are in, in pretty nice shape. This one doesn't have much evidence of being serviced any time recently, but they're all in good condition nonetheless. I'm looking for that pin. That pin is a common... Uh, design element on fishing reels and you want to push that pin through so that you can release the sleeve of the gear. Sometimes it comes in easier than others 
but most of the time you can push it through. I'm using a pick to do that. Sometimes people ask me where I get that pick. Now Harbor Freight sells them. They're inexpensive. They come in a pack with several different ones on there. That one seems to be on my bench all the time and used quite a bit. I wanted to remove that sleeve because we have dried grease on the inside on that gear sleeve post. And if we don't clean that grease off and re-lube, it is going to uh, slow the performance of the reel. I'm going to use fishing reel grease for that, just a light coat. I'm using Penn's Precision Reel Grease. I'm going to go ahead and put that back on. I'm going to line this pin up. If it's off camera, I'll apologize. Sometimes I lose the, the camera vision as I do this. We're just going to go ahead and just kind of tap that flat back on. That's the service of the gear sleeve and the bridge. Well, we have leather washers here. These look like you could probably replace these with pen uh, 155 Beachmaster washers if necessary. These are fine. They're flexible. I just noticed that. Something that you can't, uh, can't see on the video, but you can feel them. And if they feel rigid or cracked or dried or anything, well, you want to uh, make sure that you replace those. In this case, I'm not seeing any evidence of that. Check your main gear. I notice there's a little bit of tarnish on there. I'm not sure that there's anything to do with the actual dried grease inside, but I'm going to take a paper towel and a wire brush. I'm just going to clean all the teeth just to make sure. I pull that towards the paper towel so that I don't trap the uh, grease the next time coming through the top of the gear. And I uh, don't want that grease on my workbench, so a paper towel is a good place to catch that. I'm going to take some fishing reel grease. Again, this is Penn's Precision Reel Grease. I don't care too much which grease you use, but I do care that you use fishing reel grease. I'm going to put that back on. We're going to use, I have Cal's uh, drag washer grease here. You don't have to use this. I want to rub it in real good. I want to make sure that these leather washers are penetrated with that, or permeated, or or the right word would be. Go ahead and put the first of the round washers in. You have two round washers and you have one that's called an eared washer. The round washers are rectangular centers and round on the outside. The eared washer is round on the inside with two points or ears. The round washers go high and low in this setup. The eared washer goes in the middle of the drag stack. One more. So if you have a question on this reel or any reel and I uh, would like to know more or maybe you're working on a reel and you're having a little bit of a problem with it, I'll go ahead and leave that in the, in the comments section and I would be happy to try and answer that for you. We have pinion gear, we have the yoke, the yoke has got some dried grease on it so we're going to make sure that that gets buffed off. I like to use the least abrasive method possible, so in this case a paper towel is able to take it off, and that's just fine. I'm going to make sure that we get a little bit of grease on both sides of that. Now we'll take a look at this pinion gear. You want to do the same thing you did with the main gear. You want to make sure that it's got nice sharp ridges on the teeth. Go ahead and take that wire brush and make sure that there's nothing that's residual in there from a grease or dirt or anything perspective. This one's clean now. We'll go ahead and just put some more grease onto the pinion gear as well. Grab your yoke. Okay, so on your, your pinion gear then we have a slot. That slot faces the spool or faces outbound. One more piece of lubrication on this side and we can start closing the reel up. You want to get some grease into that little carrier for the end of the spool. Get it on the spool. And a little bit onto the eccentric shaft. So next up then we'll reassemble the side plate. The two springs, now that I have the two, the one that uh, kind of crawled off the desk there. 
and the other one going first. Then our yoke goes on. Press the yoke down. Take that jack assembly. Hook that over the eccentric. And that's kind of the way you found it. Next up then, we're going to take our bridge. You're going to press down again. We're going to lower the bridge from underneath. And this is very much like doing a pen reel. Load the bridge underneath. And I'm noticing that there's a little bit of uh, separation on the main gear here. So I'm just going to put the, the gear sleeve on this side of it just to keep that main gear so that I don't trap that uh, anti-reverse dog. Take one of the screws and put it in the lower section, which is where the anti-reverse dog goes. Bring the anti-reverse dog over that screw. And make sure that it seats in the case. Once that is done, continue the rotation of the bridge until you align the screw in that anti-reverse dog with the hole in the bridge, just like that. When we do that now, we can tighten that side up. And we can come back and do the other three bridge screws. Now, they were all the same. So it doesn't matter what hole they go into, but what I like to do is I like to go opposing. So I just did one on the bottom, so I'll go top on the other side, come over to the top on this side. These are going through the springs that we put uh, underneath the yoke there. And we'll come back down the other side. And then we'll just do a quick turn of this, make sure everything seems to be working right before we go much further. No sense trying to put it all the way back on to find out that you have an issue there. So let's just grab that. It's turning nicely. Let's make sure that as we flip the free spool lever, it works. Okay, there just seems, there you go. There was, there was a little resistance. What happens sometimes with this is the, the, um, Pinion gear gets offset a little bit, so I'll come back and address that in a moment if that doesn't hold up. All right, I'm going to just buff the inside metal trim ring here and reinstall that. Let's put a little bit of piece onto the eccentric. Remember, we have the spring that's going to go in here. So let's get that spring on before we reinstall. And now we just have to line everything up, kind of make it all fit. That was a nice, easy case merge there. Two small screws go below. Go to my parts tray to get those. Tighten it up. Long screws going to crossbars. You see how that just flipped nice and easy now that we have the gear shaft aligned properly. Let's go ahead and put that in. I said gear shaft, I meant spool shaft. Two more to tighten. We'll test all of this out here. And if you have one of these. So this is a version, I believe it's made by Olympic. I think you can actually find this reel. And I believe it's going to be under the Ocean Star brand for Kmart. And uh, various others. The, the name on the side is, a, is what's called the trade reel. It's not who made the reel. So Danco did not make this reel. Uh, but a lot of Japanese firms in the 1970s were making, ex making export reels as trade reels. And they tend to find themselves in, well, sporting goods stores or find them at Montgomery Wards or Sears or retailers of the time. I mentioned Kmart and the like. Um, and it kind of personalized the reel, but it, there were many reels that were all the same. 
Okay, we're coming back now. We know that we had the tension washer underneath. I put our adjuster on next. Let's see if I can hold the stem. If you can't, you'll notice that there's two slots in that gear sleeve. If you have the right screwdriver, just hold the slots with the screwdriver. Be careful, you don't want to strip the piece out. But do it until you can clear the, the uh, ridge that the handle rests on. And we have the little hard washer that went under the handle. And we can use the handle as a wrench now. Tighten this down the rest of the way. Good news is, is there's only one more piece in my parts uh, tray. That piece is for the screw to hold the handle screw down. So I'm confident that at least we put all the pieces back in the reel. I have every indication it's going to be going the right way. And now you just want to align that set screw hole so that you can put the last piece in. So these have been interesting reels. Uh, Keith has sent in, I'm sorry, Kevin has sent in about seven or eight of these reels. They're fascinating. And uh, I appreciate him giving me the opportunity to work on them. All right, we're in free spool, so spin the spool. Spin the spool looks nice, and hey, it even looks nice cosmetically as we took care of that little bit of uh, greening there. We're going to do one more thing. That's to service the line guide. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the track, a little bit of oil, not grease, into the worm gear. We're going to crank our reel and gear. We're going to move the line guide over to the side so we have access to that uh, cap that's holding the pole. We'll remove the cap. I like to just kind of knock it down a little bit. And this is why you want to service the pole. You have dirt on the pole, on the shoulders, and on the rim, and that's going to cause it to skip. So make sure that you wipe all of that off. I use that pick that I have on my desk, I use an awful lot. I'm going to knock off the, the dirt that's on the inside here. It's a little gritty, so you do want to take the time when you're servicing your reel to make sure that you address the pole in addition to the rest of the reel. A little bit of oil into the inside sleeve to help that turn easily. Next thing you want to do, I have it proud, it's sitting up top there. Put pressure on it, turn the reel until the pole seats all the way in. And you can start again with the cap. I like to hand tighten the cap as much as I can because if you cross thread this thing, well, you're not going to find another. All right, let's give it that final test then. There's one nice smooth reel going there. Just a little bit of oil onto the sleeve of that knob there. Like it. Make sure that the drags are holding. They're holding. Once you do this, when you service your reel and you're done, back the drag off. You don't want to press those leather washers down. Leave it uh, relaxed until it's time to go fishing. Then tighten it up as you're uh, setting your drag for the fish of the day. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, again, please subscribe if you like the Art of Fishing Wheels repairs. If you like learning more about the fishing industry, the manufacturers and the like. That's what I try to cover here. I try to teach you how to do the reels yourself so that you can give them a second chance. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything that it is that you do. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.